Oh, Canada. The home for people who want to sweep ISIS under the rug, cover the rug in ice, and play hockey until everyone forgets about sex slavery. Nadia Murad is a Yazidi human rights activist. ISIS jihadis took her as a captive after slaughtering hundreds of people in her village, including six of her brothers and stepbrothers. She was repeatedly beaten, tortured, and raped as an ISIS sex slave. One day, her captor left the door unlocked and she ran, eventually making her way to a refugee camp. The following year, 2015, she spoke to the United Nations Security Council about human trafficking. She's been campaigning for the human rights of Yazidis and for victims of sex trafficking ever since. In 2018, she won the Nobel Peace Prize for her activism. Nadia was recently scheduled to speak about her experience to students in Canada, but there was one problem. She was in Canada. The New York Post reports, a woman who survived being kidnapped by ISIS and plunged into sexual slavery as a teen has been canceled by the largest school board in Canada, according to a report. Nadia Murad, 28, was set to sit down with students from some of the 600 schools that are part of the Toronto District School Board to talk about her upcoming book, The Last Girl, My Story of Captivity, to be published in February 2022. But school board superintendent Helen Fisher pulled the plug on Murad's visit, saying she would not let students attend because the book would be offensive to Muslims and foster Islamophobia, the Telegraph reported. Murad advocates for survivors of genocide and sexual violence and is also a Nobel Peace Prize laureate and UN Goodwill Ambassador. Why would a Yazidi advocate for survivors of genocide and sexual violence be offensive to Muslims? I thought ISIS had nothing to do with Islam. Why can't she talk about it without offending Muslims? Imagine scheduling a Holocaust survivor to speak at a school, but the school board cancels the event, saying, we can't allow students to hear this Holocaust survivor speak about what she experienced in that concentration camp because her story might be offensive to Germans. Strange place, Canada. Murad's book tells how she escaped the Islamic State after being taken from her home and sold into sexual slavery when she was just 14. Murad details how she was raped and tortured before finding her way to a refugee camp in Durhak in northern Iraq and then to Germany, where she lives today. District parent Tanya Lee was outraged, according to The Telegraph. This is what the Islamic State means. It is a terrorist organization. It has nothing to do with ordinary Muslims. The Toronto School Board should be aware of the difference, she said. Now that's interesting. ISIS has nothing to do with ordinary Muslims. There are tons of Muslims who don't approve of ISIS, but if we're talking about sex slavery and human trafficking, their prophet was definitely a fan. To give just one example out of many, Sunan an nasai 3411. It was narrated from Anas that the Messenger of Allah had a female slave with whom he had intercourse, but Aisha and Hafsa would not leave him alone until he said that she was forbidden for him. Then Allah, the mighty and sublime, revealed, O oh, Prophet, why do you forbid for yourself that which Allah has allowed to you? That's Surah 66, verse 1 of the Quran, until the end of the verse. Muhammad had sex slaves. The Quran allows Muslims to take women as sex slaves. Realizing this, ISIS jihadis took sex slaves. Some of those sex slaves escaped and began speaking out, only to be shut down by Canada where the maple syrup chugging, overly apologetic Islamophiles who control the education system are more worried about hurt feelings than they are about confronting the problem of human sex trafficking. Because they know that the more students hear about how women and girls were treated by ISIS jihadis, the more these students might go online and try to figure out why ISIS jihadis thought it was perfectly acceptable to rape their captives. As an American, I'd like to ask all our Tim Hortons obsessed neighbors to the north, what do you think about that, eh?
this is a power of religion, there's a reason to it. Yeah? Yeah?